Hello Andrew, thank you for all the excellent tutorials. I love them. Thank you, Jenna. This is an email I received from Jenna from India. She says, can you make a tutorial that teaches me how to shoot jewelries at home? I make silver jewelries on weekends when I'm not working and I sell them online. Excellent skill you have there, Jenna. And let me tell you this, without pictures, you can't sell that well. You need great pictures. I write to you because I see you always use simple equipment to shoot and not like other channels with expensive studio flashes and equipment. <laughs> yeah, right, tell me about it. No names. Yeah, simple. Great runners don't need expensive shoes, Jenna. Note, problem is I do not own a flash. Can you teach me how I can shoot pro quality jewelries without a flash? I mean, do you want pro quality? She wants pro qualities, but you, you have no flesh? Jeez. Hang on a minute, I don't even have jewelries. Where do I get jewelries? Action! Let's run through the things that you will need to shoot jewelries without flesh. You need seven things, Jenna. Number one, you need a camera. Number two, a tripod. Number three, some clamps. Number four, you need something like two poles, perhaps clothes hanger like this. And then you need fishing line. And Jenna, I hope you're happy now. I stole my wife's jewelry to do this tutorial for you. So you notice what I did. I've got the earring hanging on fishing lines. And then we have these two clamps clamping the fishing lines hanging on my wife's ironing clothes hanger. And a camera. Any camera would do on a tripod. Now the first thing that you want to do is take a shot where the background is black and you can see the jewelry. So the way to do this is to make the whole photo completely black. So how do you set up your camera to be completely black? Simple. The lowest ISO you can have on your camera, in my case, is an ISO of 100. Highest F number you can go. The highest F number I can have on my lens is F22. But don't shoot 22, you're gonna get diffraction, then your jewelry shot will not look sharp. It's kind of like a car. If the speedometer says the maximum is 220, don't go 220, but nuts and bolts will just go loose. In my case, one stop down. So 22, one stop down is F16. Now what we're gonna do is interesting. Watch this tutorial where I teach viewers how they can shoot with table lamps and just simple LED lights. This is the same concept, Jenna. Now that's it. I use a 50 millimeter prime lens and the closest I can get to the jewelry with this lens is one feet. Any closer, I cannot focus. So Jenna, I lied. You need eight things. The eighth one is your close-up filter. So this is a three times close-up filter it will just allow you to focus closer and magnify whatever you shoot three times. And this is really cheap. You can get this online on any online store. And what I do, I go to the camera. I put it on autofocus single, single point. With the focus point in the center, I will now focus on the jewelry. And then I come to the front, I flip my lens to manual focus. Someone actually asked me why I did this. The reason I did this is because we are going to be shooting in the dark. When I'm shooting in the dark, without any light source, the lens will hunt. It can't focus, there's no light source. So when I pre-focus and flip it to manual here, you will notice that I do not need to let the lens focus anymore because it's on a tripod and that's hanging on fishing line. They don't move. 
So no more pre-focus. And finally, Jenna, item number seven, you need to get one of these torchlight. You can get this from any street bazaar in Asia. I bought this for like eight ringgit. And what's cool about this LED light is, it has a mode that blinks. Get one that can blink. There's a reason why they call jewelry bling bling, because when I do this, you notice that the jewelry will sparkle. So what's left now, before we do this shoot, is to off the light and then go on really low shutter speed, like the tutorial we have where I lit up a kettle. So let's run through the setting now. ISO 100, the lowest possible. F16, the smallest hole that you can get with your aperture and 10 seconds will allow you to paint this. Make sure that when you do this, you don't hit light onto the wall. That's gonna ruin the shot. So that's it. What's left now is your white balance. If you can, don't shoot on auto white balance. So I'll always, you say you shoot silver, simple. Yellowish silver would just look like oxidized silver, Jenna. So you wanna make jewelry look a little bit brighter. So I'm gonna bring down my white balance to 4550 Kelvin or 4760. I would go for 4760 or 4005 is great. What's left now is, let's kill the light. Turn on your torch light first and here's the trick I do. I put it to my body so that I can lift it up to the jewelry anytime. Click and do this in a circular motion to the jewelry. Make sure you don't hit the wall at the back, Jenna. Wow, this is really exquisite. What you need to do is zoom in and take a look. So by zooming into your shot, you can see how sharp this is, even though we just use a close-up filter. And that's it. Notice you have this bluish tone that will really work well with diamonds or jewelries or white metal. And here are some sample shots that I've taken of jewelries. As you can see, I've shown you the straight out of camera shots and also spent three to five minutes to clean them up and make them look even nicer. And this method has its limitation. If you're shooting any gemstones that's glossy and shiny like this, this blinking torchlight will leave light trails like this. So it's not difficult to touch up, but in the coming tutorial, I'll show you how I improvise this method and overcome this limitation of shooting gemstones beautifully. But for those of you who have flashes at home, or at least one flash, and Jenna, I would strongly advise you to do this because you only get black background. Unless, of course, you can go and buy a bigger LED light just to shine light at the back. But if you have a flash, and they are really cheap these days, if you get a flash, we're gonna learn how we can make the background really white now. So I've got a flash here ready. Place it exactly on a light stand under this jewelry. This can be a ring or necklace or bangle, anything. So I'm gonna use a zoom of 20 or 24. I've got it on 20 now. And here's the simple rule. If you want white background, always come to here, set it to full power or half power. Make sure that you turn on the optical trigger. In this case, it's a TT685 Godox. So I set this to S1. Anytime you see a spark, you will fire a flash. That's it. There's one more important thing that you got to do. If you own a Nikon camera, go to your camera, press on the flash button that pops up the flash, hold this down, and then turn this dial until you see rear. If you own a Canon camera, go into built-in flash and choose second curtain. Well, look at it this way. This is your camera's shutter. It opens, and then it closes 10 seconds later. Your flash can fire two times. The first possible time is just right when the shutter opens. It fires a flash, 
and then nine seconds later, the shutter closes. So this, when the flash fires immediately after the shutter opens, is called first curtain. But if you set it to second curtain, what it does is that this flash will only fire just right before the shutter closes. And this is called second curtain, just right before the shutter closes. Now the idea is you do not want a flash to fire early. You want it to fire just before the curtain closes. Well, with the lights turn off, you probably think that I'll start painting on the jewelry now. Don't do that. You want to see how white your white is and you want to make sure that the flash from the back doesn't spill light into the jewelry. So I'm going to turn off my torch light first. And click. There you go. So let's look at the histogram of this photo now. So if you look at this, this small little bump on the left is on the shadow region of the histogram, which is right here. That is good. That means there is no flash from the background spilling onto your jewelry. And this big bump here, this peak here, that's your white background. Not as white as we typically want it to be, but you can always push it whiter when you're editing your photo. Great. We now know that our background is good enough and it doesn't spill light onto our jewelry. And only now, I flip my flash to blinking mode, click on this, and bling bling this. You can just hit your torch light onto the wall, it doesn't matter. Wow. And similarly, you're going to zoom in and take a look and see how sharp these photos are. Because you're hanging your jewelry, you want to make sure that they don't move because the wind or the fan blows it. Exquisite. This is beautiful. And that's what good photography should be. You shouldn't be using expensive equipment, expensive flashes, all those big bulky flashes. You don't actually need them. So if you like what you learn, there's a lot more of such techniques. If you sign up to my e-learning called e-learning photography for online business that teaches you how you can shoot products easily at home and sell the pictures online or sell those products online. And at the same time, we're also having our promotion on the premium courses where every week we upload video tutorials that teaches you a wide variety about photography and videography. Because what's really important now at this stage where the COVID-19 pandemic is conquering the world is for us to stay safe at home, build our skill and enhance on what the Premier of Singapore says, our gig economy ability to have side gig and additional skill. Times like this, you need to build your skill. So I see you on my website. I hope I get your support with the subscription of our premium courses and all my e-learning courses. I'll see you in the next tutorial. And don't forget, write to me like what Jenna does. Just maybe make sure that you have a flash or two, maybe, or a torchlight.